This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9, with available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults, with zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute and available lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim. Fill that out and that's it. Hey, let's kick things off with something super interesting. A homeowner in Lake County, Illinois, isn't exactly thrilled about Google satellites just snapping pics of their house. So they had a plan. They painted watch porn, not me, in giant white, in giant white letters right on the roof. Okay, And they said, well, that's going to send a message to any Google Maps explorers. Don't look at this house. Well, here's the deal. As you might expect, the reason why I'm talking about it is that the plan backfired big time. Some Facebooker spots the house on Google. They say, oh, it's so funny. They post a screenshot of it in a group for satellite image junkies. And then just boom, that image goes viral. I looked at it a few hundred thousand likes in just the last few days. Now, everyone's looking at this guy's house. So here's the thing. If you really want privacy, Google lets you blur your home's image on the satellite. To do it, just head over to Google Maps, locate your house, and then click on Report a Problem, and then adjust that red box to cover your house and choose My Home. Again, under Google Maps, Report a Problem, and then it's under My Home. But speaking of satellites, I just really hate satellites. You know why? They're just a complete waste of space. Oh, yeah, that was a great one. And on that happy note, I saw you smile. It's called The Kim Commando Show because I just happen to be America's beloved digital goddess, Kim Commando, here with you once again. And thanks for jumping on the Commando Tech train because every single thing is now a tech thing. And if you're a brand new listener, so glad that you found us. And if you listen to us all the time, welcome back. Love to see that smiling face. And you can find my award-winning show on over 420 top radio stations across the United States. And we're streaming as a podcast, as a webcast, commercial-free, over inside the Commando community. In case you want to check it out, head over to commando.com. And there's a big, bright, happy, shiny yellow button that says Commando Community. And a special hello goes out to all of our listeners in the Army, the Air Force, the Navy, the Marine Corps, the Coast Guard, and the Space Force in 175 different countries who are joining us for this show on the American Forces Network Radio, serving more than 375,000 American servicemen and women. Love you guys and gals. And in case you have a few questions about something digital that you need some help with, our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at 1-888-825-5254 is the way to join us. All right. Every single day, I go to at least 30 different websites to make sure that we're both up to date on what's going on in the tech universe. And here are five things that are happening right now about tech you need to know about. And we're going to start with that little white and blue bird. Yes, tweets. For more than a decade, Twitter itself has been a part of our lives. Now, I don't know if you heard, but Elon Musk rebranded Twitter as X. Yes, that's his favorite letter. He has a son named X and a daughter named Y, and he wants to turn it into a everything app, a super app. And it's just one app that you're going to do all your banking with, your shopping and your social media. So you just go to one app. Now, this is not just his genius idea. They have this app in China. It's the biggest Chinese super app. It's called WeChat, and it's from a mega company called Tencent. And it has over 1.3 billion users. Wow, could you imagine 1.3 billion folks on an app? It's an instant messaging app, and you can sell stuff on there. You can bank. You can buy things. You can do whatever you want. You can write notes. It's crazy. Elon says that people basically live on WeChat in China because it's so useful and helpful. I mean, wouldn't he love that type of power? But I think he's forgetting one important thing, right? The Chinese government runs the Internet in China. The Chinese have limited options when it comes to all this social media. But speaking of Twitter, uh, did you know that the Golden Gate Bridge and the Brooklyn Bridge have Twitter accounts? Yeah, that's right. Uh, They're both suspended. Oh, yeah. Okay, that wasn't the best one, but I did see you kind of smirk. All right, moving on to number two. It's a car. It's a plane. It's everything. We've been talking about flying cars forever, haven't we? 
Well, that dream may not be too far off. The extremely luxurious Aska A5 flying car has just received the green light from both the FAA and the DMV. Now, it's a four-seater vehicle. It looks about the size of, say, a medium SUV. They say it has 250 miles of range. It can zip through the sky at around 150 miles per hour. And it has the ability to take off and land vertically. So, yes, we're actually talking about a flying car that you and I can buy. Well, not yet. It's been approved for testing. It has all the standard security features of a car. It has airbags. It also has child seat tethers, uh, crumple zones, and, yes, it's a plane. But guess how much the flying car is? Come on, just say it out loud. Guess how much the flying car is? Is it $100,000, $200,000, $500,000? You ready? $750,000. Wow, $750,000. I don't think I'm going to be getting one of those. I'm a car gal. I'm not a car plane gal. All right, moving on to number three. Are you really old enough to play that video game? There's an outfit out there called the ESRB. It's the Entertainment Software Rating Board. And this is the outfit that assigns age and ratings to consumer video games in the United States and Canada. And they want to take this a step further. They want to scan your kids' faces in order for them to play some mature, violent games, adult-only games. They say they're going to create a way for verifiable parental consent. It's called the Privacy Protective Facial Age Estimation. Who names all this junk anyway? Wow. So basically, the whole idea is that the kid's going to take a selfie, and AI is going to say whether or not that kid is old enough to have that video game. All right. Here we go again. Passing off the parental responsibilities to some outfit who's going to be capturing pictures of our kids when really this is a parent's job, okay? I know it's not fun. I had a kid who loved Xbox, and I used to have to sit there and look at him and go, okay, a video game with a felony in the title is one that you're just not going to be playing, talking about Grand Theft Auto. And, of course, you know, eventually he did get it, but it's when I felt he was ready for it, not for when some outfit says that they are by scanning the kid's picture. Crazy stuff. Moving on to number four. Wouldn't it be just fantastic if you could see that new couch, shelf, or ottoman is going to look in your room before you're buying it? Well, Wayfair, that's right, the big online furniture retailer, uh, they have a brand new AI app I want to tell you about. It's called Decorify, and it lets you see your space in new styles with all that new furniture. You just take a snapshot of your room, upload it to the app, and that will show your space, but decked out all these different styles. You have industrial, modern, crazy modern, bohemian. And then, of course, it's going to direct you to similar stuff that they have for sale because why are they putting out the app? To make money, of course. Uh, right now, it's just supported for living room spots, but basically, they're going to be adding bedrooms and playrooms and any other type of kitchen, whatever it is, into the app. In case you want to check it out, it's called Decorify. It's from, uh, it's from Wayfair. All right, finally, this coming in at number five. Have you seen the stunning? Oh, my gosh, she is so beautiful. Talking about a beautiful blonde influencer just making the rounds all over Instagram. I mean, I don't think I've seen a woman more beautiful than this supermodel. Uh, Mila Sofia, she's 19 years old, a Finnish, Finnish fashion model and influencer. She goes to Greece and Bora Bora. She hangs out on million-dollar yachts. She has hundreds of thousands of followers. Now, here's the deal. If you have seen Mila, you have fallen in love with her. She's not real. She's been totally generated by AI. Her website says she's AI generated, but she's still fooling people because they're not checking it out. Uh, I mean, some comments that I've seen. It doesn't get any better than this. Or how about this one? You look marvelous, amazing, pretty, beautiful, gorgeous, stunning, and Breathtaking in that white bikini. Of course she does. She's AI. Or how about this one? Mila, you definitely rank among the most beautiful woman ever. Ever, 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 ever. It was in all caps and said multiple times. Okay. Mila would probably look real to you too. But there are some signs. Number one, she has no pores. Okay. Her face looks a little off. She takes pictures in front of the... 
uh, same background. So if you are really hot to trot for Mila Sophia, and there are probably others of them that aren't as popular on Instagram just popping up, just know that uh, that's not really reality, folks. It's all fake. It's all AI. And I know what you're thinking, too. I could be a model, Kim Commando. That's right. I could be a model. I could be a fitness model. I could be the before photo. <laughs> All right, picture this. You're at a concert. You have the thump of the bass, the cheer of the crowd. For most of us, these are the sounds that captivate and make this experience unforgettable. But what happens if you can't hear these sounds? For people who are deaf or hard of hearing, attending a concert is pretty tough. I mean, their delight doesn't come from the auditory experience. It comes from really the vibrations. So when Daniel Belker was approached to join a team at a place called Not Impossible Labs, love that name, by the way, he said, you know what, there's got to be a better way. And what if we like hold balloons to capture vibrations, turn speakers towards the ground? How can we make these sensations even better? So that's why the entire team at Not Impossible Labs, they created something called the haptic suit. All right, to tell us more about the suit, and how they pulled this off is Daniel himself. Hello there, Daniel. Hi. How are you, Kim? Um, thanks for being here. So I'm super excited because I had a chance to watch some of the videos over at the Lincoln Center in New York with these people wearing these suits. And I thought, gosh, this is just so incredible. Let's start at the beginning. Tell us about the suit itself. Okay. So this suit uh, is actually, uh, you know, the, a, a vest two wrist and two ankle bands. We have 24 points, you know, spread across the body and each point can be vibrated individually, you know, to create a, a more compelling musical experience for the deaf. And also for people who hear, they enjoy the experience a lot as an augmented uh, musical experience. So how do the, how, so how does the suit know to vibrate? So uh, we have several ways of doing this. The most basic thing that goes back in the uh, initial days, because this project's been going on since 2014, evolving, evolving, evolving. Uh, so uh, we basically grab the different instruments from the mixer, you know, on a venue. And then we just I have somebody we call the Vibro DJ, just tweaking, you know, the <laughs> knobs and making it, you know, changing the placement on, on the instruments across the body according to the style of the song you know sometimes you have like a piano and voice sometimes it's a full orchestra sometimes it's like a rock and roll band so we change it according to whatever it is and it's all done in real time it's a very interesting experience so how long did it take to put together this suit because you mentioned 2014 yes correct so it's been almost a decade you know developing this technology so the current um, version of the technology uh, was done actually with the support of, you know, uh, uh, Avnet, you know, they helped us uh, get to this point. So um, this version was created in 2018. But since then, I have been evolving the software, you know, other applications, having, you know, um, other composers creating for the suits, because we also can have the vibrations being composed in advance and then going in tandem with the music or video content. It's, it's yeah. So, um, no pun intended, what kind of feedback do you get from folks that are wearing the suits? Oh, uh, people get really, really uh, excited about the whole uh, concept because it's very surprising. You know, we have people saying, you know, I never imagined the experience would feel like this. It's way better than I expected and all because for us, it was very important that this wasn't just a gimmicky thing, you know, like shape shaking people up, you know, like an amusement, amusement park thing. It was more of like a layered experience that would would have, you know, real artistic and emotional value. Uh, so that's what we've been really pushing the boundaries of the technology to represent a tool for emotional experiences and, and connection, you know, in between like different uh, types of people with, you know, not all of the hearing levels, you know, regardless if you're deaf, if you're hearing, if you're hard of hearing, uh, you can enjoy the experience equally. So are there any other venues aside from Lincoln Center or is there something that somebody could buy at home that would kind of replicate this experience? 
we we still uh, you know don't have a, a consumer uh, experience for people to take it uh, you know to home. But we do. We are doing a, a series of events in several you know countries and and places in the U.S. So we have uh, you know uh, things happening in New York, not only in Lincoln Center in Philadelphia, in Los Angeles. We do things here and there. Um, we we are doing uh, an event in Japan for the second year in a row. Uh, we we have events in Australia, in England, in Germany, in France, in Brazil. Like we we wow. we are That's yeah, awesome. we're Canada. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So um, so where's your website so folks can learn more about this and see it in action? Yeah, musicnotimpossible.com. Uh, you can find all the information there. Well, I think it's incredible what you guys and gals are doing with the technology for the, the deaf, and thank you so much for being here. All right, let's switch gears just a little bit. Your fancy smartwatch can track your heart rate, your steps, your calories, even how much water you're drinking. It's all great for your health, but what about your mind? Apple's latest updates, which are available in beta iOS 17, it has a new app called Mindfulness. Now, recording your emotions, they say, can enhance your overall well-being. And research is backing this up. The Journal of Medical Internet Research has said that folks who monitor your moods, that you are more self-aware, you have a higher emotional intelligence. So in case you want to check it out now, just go to beta.apple.com and you can download the beta version of iOS 17. And then there's a mindfulness app. And I'll tell you something, I started using it and I found out that I'm just like overall always happy. I am always happy. Isn't that crazy? And joining us right now on the Kim Commando Show is our amazing content queen, Allie Seligman. Hello there, Allie. Hi, Kim. So, wow. I saw that email that you got. I oh, mean, yeah. I mean, at least, you know what? At least people are listening. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's the thing. true. Yeah. Okay. Whenever you, you know, any feedback is sometimes good feedback. And in case you missed this whole segment that we talked, that we're going to be talking about, is that, that Ali, you, you did this whole segment about mispronunciations of tech terms. And there are some other words that people mispronounce. Like, like how would you say this word, Ali? You ready? Yeah. N U C L E A R. N U C L E A R. <laughs> how would you say that? Uh, nuclear. Okay. Nuclear. Okay. Some people say nuclear, nuclear, nuclear. Yep, I remember oh, yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Okay. How about um, how about this word? Okay. I should you know we we didn't rehearse any of this, so I'm sorry. I'm just throwing it at you. Ready? S h e r b e t. S h r b e t. Oh man, it's sherbet. Sherbet. It, not you're right. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not sherbet. Not sh no, not sherbet. It's sherbet. Yes. Sherbet. Right. Uh, and so this email that you received, um, why don't you tell us about it? Yeah, this was from uh, our pal Denise in Georgia. And I will say, this was the nicest of the emails we received about this. So Denise listened. She said, I believe the lady who is telling us how to pronounce words, I'm that lady, mispronounced the word often. It is often, the no T in the dictionary, or sorry, it's often in the dictionary. The T is silent. Why do they bother putting in letters and words if they are supposed to remain silent? I'm with you, Denise. Uh, apparently, I said often. Uh, it is often. And thank you for pointing this out. I'm going to go on the record and say silent T is really dumb. Um, I don't know. I guess I'm going to start saying like ballette, uh, listen. <laughs> like, let's just, let's just really go for it on the T. But again, for the record, it is often, not often. You know, we all flub words. I mean, you know, here I am doing this show for 20-odd years, right? And, oh, my gosh, Allie, I woke up to, like, the nightmare email. One of oh, our no. biggest stations is WTOP in Washington, D.C. And apparently I said the word H-E-I-R-L-O-O-M in a daily tech update. Mm -hmm. I said it as heirloom. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a heirloom. It's like, you know, like a barrette. Um, no. Uh, and it's obviously, it's heirloom. Heirloom. Sometimes right? you're just moving quick. It happens. It happens to the best of us. So what's on your mind today? 
Reddit is on my mind. There is a there is a subreddit I love. It is called You Should Know. And as the name implies, people are posting things there that either they wish they had known sooner, maybe little tidbits that they've shared with people that have like kind of blown their minds. And so they take to this subreddit to post them. And I found some good tech related ones that you should know. And Kim, okay, you good. probably already know them, but everyone else should know. Okay, <laughs> we've got five. The last one is my favorite because uh, it's going to keep you from getting really embarrassed one day, I promise. Number one, you can reach 911 usually, even if your phone has no service or it's in roaming mode. This is really cool because emergency calls should go through even if you don't have a SIM card in the phone. And this is because every cellular network is required to process emergency calls. So even if it's not your cell network, another one will pick up the call and transfer you to emergency services. Yeah, so, you know, that's really great for all these people that have phones sitting in just their desk drawers. Totally. And, uh, and you know, it's something that, you know, you can just make sure it has a charge and throw it in your car or wherever, you know, and then this way you can always have emergency service available. Absolutely. And uh, a reminder, if you have an old phone that you gave to a kid and you thought, oh, I took out the SIM card, it's fine, they can't call anybody, they can still call 911. <laughs> so teach your kid about that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's a good one. That You know what? That's one that's going to help a lot of people. What do you have, have next? What about when you drop your phone in water? There is one thing you should do immediately, and this is going to prevent a lot of the damage. Turn it off. Yes, don't throw it in rice on. You need to turn your phone off because the longer you keep it running, the more chances things are going to malfunction. You're going to you know, burn things out. Um, so really what's happening there is the water is messing with those components because they are powered on. So turn your phone off and don't Get impatient here. You have to leave it off for a while. You know, give it at least 24 hours. Of course, you're going to be tempted to turn on your phone after 20 minutes. Like, oh, is it ruined? But that is when you ruin it. So give it some time. And that's your best bet for saving your phone if you get it wet. Well, I was by the pool with Abby. So I'm totally going to blame Abby on this. And I was holding my phone and then she jumped on me. And I almost fell in the pool. uh, (laughs) And... Abby is is not a child. Well, she's as big as a child. She's 95 pounds. <laughs> she's a big okay. dog. Nine, yes. Okay. All right. I weigh 120. So we're not too far apart from each other, yeah, right? Yeah, seriously. Uh, and so my phone goes right goes in the pool. So then Barry's like, and I can't go in the water because I still have this cornea transplant. I'm not supposed to get the eye wet, right? So Barry jumps in, pulls my phone in. And then I remembered on my phone, I didn't turn it off right away because I had that shortcut on there. And there's a shortcut that when you drop your phone in water is that it will go ahead and push out all the water that's in the speakers. So cool. Yeah. So, so you know, so if you don't have a direct access to that, absolutely turn your phone off and then throw it in the rice or the silica packs or whatever you want to do. But, you know, some people say that rice trick doesn't work, but it has worked for me. Have you tried that? I have done the rice, but, you know, I bet in a lot of cases – People turn off their phone and stick it in the rice. And I'd be willing to bet it's just as much about having the phone off as the rice actually doing anything. That's probably true. That's probably true. All right. Those two are great. So, so far you're like, uh, you're at a 10 10 out of 10 for both of us. What do you have next? (laughs) Okay. let's, Let's hope I can keep it up. Okay. This is one that I have actually used several times. You should know that you can search for some of the articles that come up in your Apple News feed that have a paywall and you can read them for free on the actual website. This happens with us a lot, Kim, because you will share a story and say, oh, Ellie, I found this great story for the newsletter. It's an Apple News link. I open it. Oh, paywall, because I don't have Apple News Plus. And so I search for the headline. It takes me to the website where that story originally came from. And most of the time, I can read it for free there. There is no paywall. Or it's one of those like, you know, this is your third free article out of 10 or whatever it is. So if you get paywalled on a news aggregator, just try searching the headline, and I bet you'll find it on the original website. Yeah, 100%. 100% you will. All righty. What do you have next? Okay, two more. This is a security-related one. When you get that pop-up that says, accept all cookies or reject all cookies, most of us probably clicked click reject all most times. Uh, but according to Reddit, you should know that choosing reject all does not actually reject all cookies. This is pretty tricky because there's a workaround where... Basically, advertisers lobbied (laughs) to say, reject all, mm, uh, we think we can still get some things in there. And they do. So this is a loophole, basically, in GDPR, which is what 
where all this cookie stuff comes from. Uh, so when you click reject all, something is something is okayed called legitimate interest cookies, and this is essentially advertising. So that button doesn't yeah, uh, I mean, do exactly what we think, eh? Yeah, well, the advertisers are always going to get there. All right, we're coming short on time. So you have your last one, which I think is probably going to be your best one. You should know. If you are taking a phone call on your car's Bluetooth, everyone walking by your car can hear what you're saying. Seriously, <laughs> you know this if you've uh, ever been in a parking lot before, but if you're ever on a private phone call, a sensitive phone call, perhaps you're talking to your doctor or your spouse, or you're saying something that you don't want the whole world to hear, be careful because that speaker in your car is really loud outside the car and you're not going to know it because you're in the car having the conversation. Uh, one little tip, if you are going to be you know, in a parking lot or somewhere quiet having a combo, turn down the speaker, you probably have it cranked up from when you were driving when you needed it a lot louder. So turn that down because everyone just heard you tell your doctor uh, about that rash I, I or whatever. Rash. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got a rash. <laughs> All right. This is great stuff, Allie. I know you're going to be putting them inside of our free newsletters over at getkim.com. I Wonderful sure am. stuff. Thanks for being here. That's Thanks. awesome. All right, just when I was talking to Allie, our amazing content queen, I just briefly mentioned our newsletters. And if you're not getting our newsletters, let me tell you, you need to. Okay, I'm just saying that. You need to at least try it. And if you don't like it, you can unsubscribe. But I think you're going to love it. I mean, if I look at all the reviews that we've been getting, almost 40,000 this morning, thumbs up and about 800 thumbs down. That's a big spread. I mean, from the people who love it and the people who don't like it. And so every morning, you're going to get the latest tech news. I get up at 5 a.m. to make sure that I go through all the news wires and just to make sure that you're up to date. And then in the afternoon, it's different. You get a digital life hack and maybe some news about product updates or recalls. And so, again, in the morning, you're going to get a whole tech news roundup with a tech story and some other things. In the afternoon, it's a digital life hack. And so do it now. Head over to getkim.com. Once again, that's getkim.com. The newsletters are absolutely free. Uh, we're not going to sell, lease, distribute your email address to anybody ever. Don't worry about that. And again, that's getkim.com. All right, Bob in Philadelphia. Hi, Kim. Greetings from the mushroom capital of the world, Kenneth Square. <laughs> Fabulous. What's going on, my man? I've been listening to you for years on WILM in Delaware, and I've learned so much from you. Uh, I can't tell you how much I've learned. And plus, you're your dad jokes are the best. My family. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, I, I repeat your jokes to my family, and they say, oh, Grandpa, another dad joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fabulous. That's yeah. fabulous. So, um, so how can I lend a hand today? Well, uh, I organize um, a group of guys playing tennis. I'm, I'm 79, and my group of tennis players, there's 12 of us, uh, range in the 70s and 80s. And I wow, make this. Awesome. Yes, yes, thank you. And I make this uh, spreadsheet schedule. It's it, for two months at a time. We play five days a week, and everybody will play one or two or three times a week. So it's kind of a complicated schedule to make. Uh, and I I send it to them in an email in PDF format. And you know, being seventy and eighty years old, they lose the email. They lose the schedule. They constantly trying to find their schedule when they're going to play. So there's a lot of texting and emailing back and forth, who's playing for who, and it gets quite confusing. And there's a lot of times we end up with only three players. So what I had a thought was if I could have a web page that the only mm -hmm. thing on the web page was the, the schedule. So they have an easy access web page to a, to a website called maybe something like geezertennis.org or something. That, <laughs> they, they'd never forget that, you know, and uh, then they could see uh, when they're supposed to play. But uh, it's not cheap to have a website, and it's a little complicated. Uh, I'm pretty handy with a computer. I'm kind of like the go-to guy in the neighborhood, but I've never done well, anything Well, let me ask you like a question. A so how... So how, you're doing it now in, in, in a Word doc and spreadsheet, and then you're saving it as a PDF? How are you doing this? 
I'm, I started years and years ago in Excel, and now I've turned converted to Apple about 10 years ago. So it's in a numbers format, but not everybody mm-hmm. has Apple. So I, I convert it, export it to PDF, and that's what I send them, a PDF. Okay, we're going to make your life so much easier. You're going to love oh, this. Right. Okay. All right, we're not going to make you build a website, okay? We're not going to make you do PDFs anymore. We're not going to make you email anybody anything, okay? So Ooh. what you have, we're not going to use numbers. We're going to use Google Sheets because you, have, you already have it in a spreadsheet, so you're going to get a, a free Google account and use Google Sheets, okay? Okay. So this way, it's, it's going to work the same way. So you can list the dates, the match pairings on the sheet, and then you can share it with the players. So the only thing that you need to share with them is this address, for, this address for the Google Sheet. So they can look at it any single day that they want, have as many times. They can check it for updates. You don't have to email them anything. You just say, look at the Google Sheet. And then they should have the address. You're not going to have to give them the address one month and then a new address the next month. They're just going to have that one Google address. Okay. So uh-huh. the only thing they need to do is check the Google Sheet for updates. But the link is going to be the same even as you update all the information. Okay. So only the only thing you're going to have to do is just create that Google Sheet and then share it with everybody else that is on the tennis team. You'll, all you have to do is create the Google Sheet and then share it with anybody else who is participating with the match. And then they don't have to worry about getting a new PDF. They just have to always look at that same Google Sheet address. Now, if you want to use Google Calendar, you could do it that way. It may be a little bit easier uh, because then they can see a calendar view and then they're always going to get the up-to-date schedule. But either way, the only thing that is required is that all your players have Google accounts. But these are free, and they probably already have one already. So, again, you're going to make a Google Sheet. You're going to share it out. And when you share it, you have different options. One is a commenter. One is an editor. One is a viewer. So you want to make sure that you always remain the editor, and then you only share it out so that they're viewers so they can't make the changes themselves. Bob, thank you so much for your call today. And, yeah, use all those dead jokes, and you don't even need to give me credit. So let's say you're out with your family and friends, you're at this festival, you're just having a great time, and suddenly you're separated from your group, and you're just like in the sea of people, and you have no clue where anybody else is located. Yes, your smartphone and Google Maps is going to save the day. Now, to find your friends, what you do is you're going to drop a pin of your exact location on Google Maps, and then you're going to share that through a text. It's super easy to do. First, make sure that your location is turned on and it's accurate. You want to find that blue dot on a map. And that will represent your location. Just give it a little tap. Okay, that'll bring up your location details. And then here's where the magic is. There's a button that says share your location. Just simply click on that button and you'll be prompted to choose how long you want to share your location and which app you want to share it through. After that, just pick the person that you want to share it with, hit send, and then your friends are going to receive an instant notification with a link to your real-time location on Google Maps. So next time, don't panic. Just drop a pin. And you can find me 24-7 at commando.com. This program is a copyrighted production of Westar Multimedia Entertainment and protected by the copyright laws. Any rebroadcast or use of this program for commercial, business, economic, or financial purposes without the written permission of Westar Multimedia Entertainment is strictly prohibited. Tax day is coming. Oh, no. But if you sign up for Robinhood Gold's IRA with a 3% match, you can get up to $195 for the 2023 tax year. Oh, yeah. Sign up at Robinhood.com slash boost by tax day to get the biggest contribution match on the market. Subscription fees apply. Investing involves risk. 3% match requires gold for one year from first match. Must keep IRA for five years. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC.